Uh, just one quick thing before we get into this. The previous video, it actually, I think it said 5.4 up here for the uh, radical functions. That actually should have been 5-5. Not that it really makes a big difference, but uh, just wanted to let you know that. Okay, so now we're going to talk about uh, radical equations. Uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to square both sides to solve a radical equation. But before you square, you want to isolate the square roots. Okay, if at all possible, isolate your square roots. So let me show you here. Um, I, on this example, I would not want to try to square both sides here. Because if I did, I would actually have to square a binomial. And when you square a binomial, it's much more complicated than squaring a single expression or a single radical. So what I'm going to do is, let's add 4 to both sides. So let's say I add 4 to this side, and that will cancel the 4. And then add 4 to 0, and that will give me the 4. So basically, I'm just moving the minus 4 across the equal sign, and it becomes 4. Okay, so now... I can square both sides. If you square a single radical, if you square a square root radical, then it's just the square is just going to cancel out the radical and it's just going to give you what's in the radical called the radicand. So the radicand here is 5x plus 1 and then if I square this side I must square the other side so squaring 4 squared gives me 16. And then you should know how to solve that now. Just subtract 1 from both sides, and you get 5x equals 15. Then divide both sides by 5, and you get x equals 3. Now, you really should check the answers. So let's plug 3 back in real quick. Square root of 5 times 3 is 15, plus 1 is 16. So I get square root of 16 minus 4 equals 0. And square root of 16 is 4, so 4 minus 4 equals 0. So therefore, it does check. Okay, the next one. Uh, again, I want to isolate the square root. So notice I have the 1 over here with the square root. So the first thing I want to do is move the 1 to the other side. And if I move it to the left of the equal sign, it becomes uh, x minus 1. So now I can square both sides. So I'm going to square the radical. And of course, by squaring the, the square root, it's just going to give me what's in the square root, 7 minus x. Now here, you got to be careful because we're squaring a binomial here. And remember, when you square a binomial, you're going to get three terms. So you're going to get the, the x squared, and you're going to get twice the product of the two terms. So twice the product of minus x would be minus 2x. And then you're going to get the second term squared plus 1. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do next is, I did this in my head. I think you can probably do it in your head. But what I'm going to do next is I'm going to simply just add x to both sides. So if I add x to this side, it'll cancel it. And if I add x to this, I get minus 2x plus x, which gives me minus x. Then I'm also going to subtract 7 from both sides. So if I subtract 7 from this side, it'll cancel it. And then when I subtract 7 from 1, 1 minus 7 is negative 6. And then I won't have anything on the right. So I've just got a quadratic equation equal to 0. And I can solve that by factoring. It factors into x minus 3, x plus 2. Set the factors equal to 0. x minus 3 equals 0 leads to x equal 3. And then x plus 2 equals 0 leads to x equal negative 2. Now, if you check these answers, if you plug the 3 back in, you'll get right here, you'll get um, 7 minus 3 is 4. And the square root of 4 is 2. So you get 1 plus 2 is 3. And then on the left, you'll get 3. So, so that checks. But if you plug the negative 2 in, you'll actually get um, 7 minus negative 2 would be 7 plus 2, which is 9. And square root of 9 is 3. So you get 1 plus 3 is 4 on the right. But since x is negative 2, the left would be negative 2. And so you get a statement that's not true. So we have to get rid of this answer. This answer doesn't work. So the only answer here that works is the x equal 3. Okay, here's one more. Again, isolating the radical. I'm going to add x to both sides, and that way I get the x over here, and that becomes x plus 3. And then you can square both sides next. So square both sides. And again, when you square the radical, remember you're going to get three terms. So here I'm going to get x squared plus 6x plus 9. 
when I square uh, when I square this uh, square root, it's going to eliminate the radical. So I just get 6x plus 13. And then again, we can play the little game, subtract 6x from both sides, and it'll cancel it there. And actually, when I take 6x away from this side, it'll cancel it there. And then subtract 13 from both sides. So if I try, subtract 13 from both sides, it'll cancel it there. And then 9 minus 13 gives me negative 4. So I get x squared minus 4 on the left and 0 on the right. And then when I factor this, it factors into x minus 2 times x plus 2. And then set your two factors equal to 0. And you get x equal 2 or x equals negative 2. Now, I didn't check this. I'm not sure why. Let me check it real quick, and let's see if we get, if this works. All right, let's try the 2 first. If I plug 2 in, I get 12 plus 13, which is 25, and square root of 25 is 5, right? And then 5 minus 2 is 3, and that's what I have on the left is 3. So the 2 checks. All right, what about negative 2? If I plug negative 2 in, I get negative 12 plus 13. That's going to give me 1, right? So that's going to give me 1. And then, uh, so the square root of 1 would be 1. And then minus negative 2, that gives me plus 2. So 1 plus 2, that's 3. So that works too. So both of these work. All right. Okay, now another thing, if the roots are, are different roots, um, let's say let's say you have cube roots. Well, if you have cube roots, you still want to isolate the radical. So here I have this cube root plus 2. So let's get the radical isolated. So let's move the 2 over here, and I have a negative 2. Now I can cube both sides, because if you cube a cube root, the, the, the power eliminates the root, and you just get the radicand. So I get 2x minus 3. And then when I cube negative 2, I get negative 8. And then I can solve that, just add 3 to both sides, and I get 2x equals negative 5. And then divide both sides by 2, and you get x equals negative 5 halves. Now again, you might want to check that, but x equals negative 5 halves. Uh, here's another one. This one we don't have to do anything with because it's already got the cube root isolated. So here I would just cube both sides. So 4 cubed is 64. If I cube the uh, cube root of x plus 1, I just get x plus 1, and then just subtract 1 from both sides, and you get x equals 63. Now, this isn't a cube root, but I just wanted to show you a different root. Uh, you basically could work it just like I did number 1 there, except uh, I just have to realize this is a fifth root. So isolate the, uh, the root so you get um, the root equals negative 2. And then since this is a fifth root, we want to raise uh, everything to the fifth power. If you raise it to the fifth power, you get um, 3x plus 1. And then when you raise this to the fifth power, you get negative 32. And then you can subtract 1 from both sides, and you get 3x equals negative 33. And then uh, divide both sides by 3, and x equals negative 11. Again, make sure you check these, but that should work there. Um, you notice I didn't do any problems where I had something like, like go over here. I didn't do a problem where I had something like a binomial over here, like a negative 2 plus x. I know that's kind of ugly, but let's say I had x minus 2 or something over here. Well, it's much more complicated to cube a binomial. It's very complicated to cube a binomial. So, I mean... You probably could have problems like that, but you'd have to know how to cube a binomial uh, in that case, or if we were doing one over here like that, you'd have to raise a binomial to the fifth power. So we're not going to get that deep into it here. Okay. And so that's how you solve uh, radical equations there. Um, in the next section, we're, we're actually going to be solving radical equations but I'm going to be writing them using rational exponents for the radicals rather than the radicals. Okay, so that takes care of this section, so we can move on to the next section that involves solving equations with rational exponents.